everyone, it's Ivy here today and today I have a very different video. Today we're going to be kickstarting off a, I guess, new series that I wanted to introduce on my channel. I haven't, like, worked out what I want to call it yet, but it's something along the lines of, like, my health series. But, um, in case you haven't realised by clicking onto this video, I just like to call this video 35 to 43 kilos. Kicking off this health video, I'm going to be talking about weight gain. So, there was this one point in my life where I became so incredibly skinny. Um, the lowest I'd ever been in my adult life was probably 35 kilograms. I don't know what that is in pounds, but I'll convert that on the bottom and show you guys. It's shocking, like it's very, very skinny, but also I have always been so incredibly skinny my whole life. I'm currently like the heaviest that I've ever been in my life and it's not even that heavy. Like I know I'm still underweight. So I just want to talk to you guys about the journey I've been through. Oh, mm, this one's gone. That's lovely. How I gained weight and tips for people who feel like they want to gain weight and are struggling to. So I'll quickly give you like a quick backstory of everything. I've always been incredibly skinny my whole life, like I mentioned before. If you look at all photos of me from when I was really young to about like a last year, before last year, um, I've just always been really, really thin and this is because of one main pressing issue in my life that I began to deal with just last year. I had this incredibly huge fear of vomiting. I made a video about it called Emetophobia and Overcoming It. I have not fully overcome it but I just wanted to make this video to help encourage people. And that was something that I felt like really held me back for such a long time. I was incredibly skinny because I was scared of food and I was scared of eating food and I always associated food with vomiting. I never let myself be full before because I was always afraid of throwing up. That's the reason why I felt like I was really skinny my whole life. I knew I needed to gain weight, like I remember leaving grade 12. I was about 39 kilos, you guys, and that is just not okay. The first point I remember I knew I needed to gain weight was at my grade 12 formal and I wore this tube dress. I remember that night like so many people came up to me and were like, wow you're so skinny, wow I didn't realize how thin you were, wow like just kept making those comments and I was like feeling so self-conscious that whole night and I was like okay like maybe I need to do something about it. It wasn't until 2016 that just a lot of stuff had happened that year and I was incredibly incredibly stressed and when I'm stressed I don't eat like I stress to the point where I feel so sick and I don't want to eat. I lost a lot of weight by that time. That's when I became 35 kilos and I spent all of 2017 and the majority of 2018 trying to recover from that. Like I knew from that point onwards, I was like, okay, I definitely need to gain weight. I definitely need to get more healthier, especially in my mind, like psychologically, I'm not well at all. My brother started gymming at this point and he wanted to gain weight for gym and he was doing so like really really well. I just remember asking him on tips on how to gain weight and he really tried to help me. So I was like trying and failing and trying and failing like I would go one week with eating my caloric fill and then like the next three weeks after that I just I just wouldn't and I'd like lose that weight that I gained even if it was like 500 grams and it just was like a constant back and forth back and forth cycle. It was just not fun at all like being underweight is really really so unhealthy i remember feeling so fatigued all the time i had to take a nap every day because i just like felt like i had no energy and i felt like if i didn't get like a full nine ten hours of sleep a day i could not function properly the next day and nine or ten hours of sleep is quite excessive for a regular adult person i remember i had no energy and this really reflected on my work ethic, I constantly felt like I wasn't able to do a lot. And it wasn't actually until like July, August 2018 when I actually finally gained weight. I was about 37 kilos at this point and really tried my hardest to gain weight and try to keep the weight on. And this is when I started feeling the healthiest that I could. It's absolutely not easy to gain weight. There are so many things that you have to 
train yourself on and people just think oh wow like it's a great excuse to eat burgers and pizza and ice cream whatever you want and even I guess like gaining weight but not gaining fat so finally gaining weight so this is the point where I guess I just wanted to talk about how I actually gained weight and tips and tricks for those who are trying to gain weight and struggle I remember posting about this on my Instagram about a year ago and so many people had messaged me like saying that they were really happy for me and even like People were messaging me on my Instagram being like, how did you gain weight? How did you do it? How do you put on the weight? And so I wanted to talk about that here, like condense that all in a video. And yeah, the first step that I took was downloading this app called MyFitnessPal. And I know so many people use it. You pretty much just set it up and you put down your current weight. You've got to be completely honest with yourself though on this app. If you're not honest with yourself, you're just cheating yourself. So you put in your current weight your current height, the weight you want to be, and how much weight you want to gain each week, and also even your activity levels. I'm actually trying to gain weight again. I gained like about eight kilos last year, and then I took a bit of a break from that. Now um, I'm trying to gain weight again for my wedding. I started again at 43 kilos, and I'm at 43.6. Been doing this for about a week and a half. I do it in kilojoules because everything here in Australia is marked in kilojoules. The kilojoules was so much more higher for me last year because I was more active. I was at uni and I was walking around a lot and I was working a retail job. So I did a lot more physical activity than I do currently. Right now, I live a pretty sedentary lifestyle. I sit in an office and sit down 40 hours a week and then go home and just edit a video. So I don't really do a lot of physical activity on a daily basis, but it's something that I'm wanting to change. Yeah, this app is really cool because um, what you do is like, for example, for breakfast, you click add food on the bottom and then you can search for your food. And what's really great about it is that you can scan barcodes and stuff. In conjunction to this, my fitness pal, you definitely need to use like a little mini weighing scale when weighing all your food. I'm pretty sure all the gym people will tell you this. It is so important to have an accurate record of what you're eating daily just because like you don't want to cheat yourself like you might think you're eating 300 grams of rice or something but in reality you only ate something like 220 that's 80 grams of rice that you are not accounted for and that you're not eating so aside from my fitness pal the main thing to do to gain weight is of course eat and like i mentioned to you guys before eating used to freak me out like it used to actually terrify me because I used to be so scared of vomiting. I've come up with a few tips and tricks that helped make it so much more easier to, for me to be able to eat and eat a lot without feeling overwhelmed, I guess. So the first tip that I have is pre-prepping your meals. I didn't have a lot of money like last year when I was still in uni, so I would only spend $50 a week on food and that covered all my meals for like five days. Pretty much like breakfast lunch and dinner if i had a chance to i will do a video on this and like prepping and bulking whatever for 50 dollars a week what i would do is like i would make pasta for the week and then i would put them in a container like five different containers and pre-measure all the pasta and write on the container or like put a little sticky note on it being like 300 grams of penne pasta 200 grams of beef mitts and then i would just try to measure it on the app i just find that like when I don't prepare my meals, I get so lazy and I just eat whatever and I don't end up measuring it on the app. One tip that I have that is so incredibly important is always remembering that the last few hundred kilojoules are so important for weight gain. That is literally where the weight gain comes in. Like if you see that you have three, four hundred kilojoules left and you might be like, oh, it's fine. Like I've met my fill for the day it's all good. That is actually where the weight gain comes in. Like you might be expending 8,000 kilojoules worth of energy per day and you might only eat 8,000 kilojoules of energy per day. You're just pretty much eating the amount of energy that you are putting out but that extra 400 kilojoules um, that you're supposed to make could actually make or break your weight gain. So in those last few hundred, as hard as it is, like I know for myself that is always the hardest in those times, I'll usually eat something that is very small but like has high calories in it. Like, I know this is probably not the best practice, but like ice cream or chips or something. If I was already full by the end of the day and I needed to make 400 kilojoules, I would not eat an apple. Which kind of brings me to my next point. When trying to gain weight, 
I actually found that the food plan that I had to follow was eating five meals a day. I had to eat breakfast, a small snack in between, lunch, a light afternoon snack, and then dinner. I tried to find foods that were really easy or like meals that were really easy for me to be able to eat quickly and gain weight but not feel like I was eating so so much. So things that I found that were really easy for me to eat, liquids. Liquids help me so much, like for example, up and go, especially the up and go energy ones, like the protein ones, they help me so much and they even taste really good, so that's always great. Um, milk protein shakes, I personally wouldn't recommend this, but I know my brother drinks it um, daily and it actually helps him reach quite high kilojoules in such a small amount. Adding cheese to anything that you can, like for example, pastas, breads. I don't know, just anything that you feel like you would like to eat cheese with. Cheese is pretty fattening, but I would recommend adding like maybe 20 grams or so of that onto any of the foods that you eat because it helps a lot. Healthier snacks, for example, such as bananas, hummus and crackers, I love that. It's more of a healthier snack and I feel like it actually helps you meet your caloric surplus really easily. Granola bars, I've only started doing this really recently, but I found that granola bars, something like this small, like already worth seven to 800 kilojoules a day. That's literally like an afternoon snack and that's all I need to eat. Again, another healthier alternative is adding granola to your oats. So I remember when I tried to first start gaining weight, I just ate oats by itself and water and I would have like massive heaping bowls of oats. And it was something, I put something in like 90 grams of oats. I ended up with this massive bowl and I remember eating it and I was like, why am I so full? And then I would measure it and it'd be something like 1400 kilojoules worth of breakfast. I think like adding granola on top of that helps you reach that 1400 kilojoules a lot quicker than eating like a whole massive bowl of just watered down oats. And the last tip that I have for gaining weight is consistency. Consistency is key. It takes 21 days to build a habit so it's not something that you're gonna like be able to dive into and be an expert at straight away. It's definitely not easy at all. You're gonna feel really uncomfortable, you're gonna feel bloated a lot of the time and your body changes so quickly when you start gaining weight. I definitely think sticking to it and being consistent throughout all it is so rewarding in the end. Once you feel so healthy and you just feel like you love life. Say you're supposed to gain 500 grams a week through the food that you're eating. Even if you don't gain that 500 grams a week, you could still gain two, 300 grams a week and that's still progress. A little bit of progress is better than no progress at all and I definitely think at least just working towards it every single day, you're going to get somewhere. It doesn't matter if it takes you like two whole years to gain eight kilos. It doesn't matter if it takes you like three months. As long as you're healthy in your weight and you're happy in it, that's all that counts and I highly recommend just working towards it every single day. And again, the last tip that I kind of have is exercising. So this time last year, I did try to gain weight. I don't know if I have any clips of it anymore, but I did film myself working out every now and then. I did a lot of weight training and I even joined a gym and I would try to like turn up my arms and my legs, toning and weights help so much more than cardio but yeah you could definitely add cardio into your routine if you wanted to because I know gaining a bit of weight you do tend to feel a bit bloated around the stomach and the arm area so if you wanted to do cardio I would still recommend and yeah that is the video that I have for you guys I think I'm done because the sun is telling me to go away. Let me know what you guys think of this video. Give it a big thumbs up if you really like it and you want me to continue this like weight gain series. Subscribe to me if you haven't already and follow me on my Instagram. It's at IvyNascalNicole with two E's. Would love to chat to more of you guys. Goodbye.